So the House passed the HR1, the bill enacts automatic voter registration. It ends partisan and racial gerrymandering. It's huge. Uh, institutes public financing of elections, expands early voting, prevents voter purges, exposes dark money, counter Citizens United. This is a big deal, which is precisely why it's not going to fucking pass, obviously. Uh, let's be real. Um, come the fuck on. Uh, and uh, let's hear it. Let's see what Cornell West and Ron Brownstein were discussing about Republicans across the country. Uh, listen, guys, I I've talked about this many times over, but let's be fucking real. All right. Republicans, this is their bread and butter. Republicans have. I mean, American politics revolves around black people not voting. OK, or, or black people's humanity being robbed from them, whether it is the three fifths compromise whether it is uh, the, the, uh, the abolition of slavery and then the Reconstruction era uh, and, and the aftermath of the Reconstruction era with uh, the Jim Crow laws instituted in the segregated South, but also Northern Jim Crow laws as well uh, that weren't mm, completely in the books in the same way that it was completely codified in the same way that it was in the South, but still very much existed. That legacy still permeates through all American institutions. And honestly, that is uh, the Republican bread and butter. Conservative bread and butter has always been limiting black people and their political power, okay? And, and a, lot of, a lot of black people have died for this. A lot of black people have, uh, a lot of people in general have, uh, have uh, put their lives on the line to ensure this. And uh, it, uh, even after all of these uh, initiatives, even after the civil rights movement, for example, um, you still come back to the reality that the Supreme Court could just like undermine all of that by uh by taking away the federal uh by taking away federal control over what states are are acting out in undesirable ways to limit um to to limit uh the the uh, black political power the three-fifths compromise was good for black people at the time it limited the political power of southern white slave owners brother are you fucking are, are you dumb like do you not understand there's there's still an implication there that black people are three-fifths uh, uh, white. Like, even... First of all, the southern slave owners wanted black people to be... Uh, to, to have political purchasing power, but not necessarily a say in the conversation. They wanted those bodies to be considered as, as uh, uh, voters without voting powers. And the three-fifths compromise it implied that they only had one three-fifth of a vote. It's not good saying that that's like increment. Like, I can't believe you're doing incrementalist takes from like the 1800s. It's mind boggling, dude. Like Democrats have this uh, kind of brain cancer where they literally have to look at everything and just be like, yeah, no, that was actually pretty good, sweaty. Like you don't understand. And I've never seen the DNC uh, defender version of like uh, the three fifths compromise. I'm so happy that you're here though. Uh, honestly. Don't act like the North cared about it either. They just wanted the South to pay more taxes. Oh, absolutely. 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 I, I don't disagree with that at all. And also, yes, uh, black people didn't gain votes in the three fifths compromise. It's the slave owners that actually got more political power as a consequence of it. Um, anyway. Uh, um, there was, yeah, there was, a, I, I'm, I'm picturing like the, the fucking uh, Northern white uh, modern day liberal equivalent of that back in the day. And, he, and he's going, well, listen here, slave. What you don't understand is three-fifths is still better than zero-fifths, if you know what I mean. I mean, why don't you take the incrementalist approach here? I don't understand. Huh. We're out here fighting for you. I mean, after all, the alternative is you get zero-fifths compromise. Is that what you'd like? It's great. <laughs> yeah. Three fifths. After all, it's more than half. Would you like, would you like two and a half uh, fifths? Is that what you would like? Two sixths, three sixths, or maybe two sixths, maybe one sixth. I am a liberal. I do want you to have your freedom. It's just that uh, you're not ready for it. <laughs> Guys, I know three fifths only gave slave owners power. I'm fucking joking about how I'm fucking joking about how like some people are so desperate to uh, to to defend incrementalism that they just like come across saying insane uh, idiotic things. It's a bit. I'm doing a bit.
Okay. Libs in the 1800s be like, here you go, have half on the quality. Well, that's the thing, like, it wasn't even the fucking liberals that wanted the three-fifths compromise, okay? It wasn't liberals that wanted it. It was the slave owners that wanted it so that they could get more political power overall with, uh, without giving uh, black people any sort of political say in the process. So that was... So it's not even liberals in that circumstance. Like, the, the supposed side that was advocating for more black uh, political representation was literally still advocating for their own personal benefit and not for the fucking uh, benefit of black people, okay? The slave owners wanted them to be counted so they would have more political power. That's it. Anyway, let's keep going. So... Battles that will define the next elections already in full swing. House Democrats moments ago passing the For the People Act, known as H.R. 1, a sweeping bill that expands voting rights. But Republicans in state houses across the country are trying to do the opposite, pushing legislation that would make it harder to vote. More than two conservatives in the chat be like, Brother, uh, what you're talking about in regards to the three of his compromise is actually really racist towards white people. Why would you bring up race? Brother, why would you bring up race in the three-fifths compromise? All you liberals see, all you libtards see is color. Black this, black that. Why the fuck are you talking about black people in regards to the three-fifths compromise? After all, it was the whites that gave black people three-fifths. I don't understand. 250 bills in 43 states to limit voting rights. And a lot of those restrictions would have a big impact on black Leave race out of it. who have been fighting for <laughs> voting rights for generations. Democrats under pressure to fight back and pass legislation that would expand voting rights like H.R. 1. Seen in senior political analyst Ron Brown seen writing in The Atlantic. It's actually kind of a funny bit. It's like uh, the, the liberal uh, slave owner who's like, I don't see color. And then, um, and, and then like, black people are like, okay, let me walk away then. Let me walk away from the fucking, uh, from, from the auction block then. Okay, well, I'm white now. If the party doesn't pass new protections, it could lose the House, Senate, and White House within the next four years. Ron Brownstein joins me now, along with Dr. Cornell West, professor of public philosophy at Harvard. Gentlemen, so good to have you on. The, your Atlantic article is amazing, and you are always amazing uh, as well, Professor. So I'm going to start with you, Ron. Your article... It really raises the alarm. You say that what happens over voting rights could be a turning point in the U.S., in U.S. democracy. Um, House Democrats just passed this H.R. 1, as I mentioned, but there's, there's a, a looming fight. Are they willing to pull out all the stops to expand voting rights instead of having it restricted in state houses across the country? So far, the answer is most Democrats are, but maybe not enough. We just don't know if Joe Manchin or Kirsten Sinema will be willing to... I just like, dude, I'm so, I'm so sick and tired of these people that just want to hear their fucking uh, names in the news. There is, I will fucking give, I will give VIP status to whoever can accurately map out what Joe Manchin's ideological positioning is in the world, okay? Or Kristen Cinemas, beyond for a week, okay? Beyond. Uh, just the uh, symbolic posturing. Do you understand? Because there is no, there is no, there, there's nothing. Like, there, you cannot comprehend it. Okay, I'll do it for a month. Like, there is, there is nothing. There is no ideological positioning beyond symbolic posturing against the Democrats. Like, he's not, when, when, the limitations occurred on the stimulus, limiting it from eighty or limiting it from hundred thousand dollars to eighty thousand dollars, right? Like pulling it back from seventy-five to eighty in, uh, instead of seventy-five to hundred thousand. Like twelve million people get knocked out of coverage, and it's only what twelve, nineteen billion dollars or twelve billion dollars that you're saving, but twenty million people and five million children are, are getting knocked out of of like potentially getting stimulus uh, uh, packages, right? Like that's not for the West Virginians. Like there is no there is no actual fucking uh, uh, austerity uh, uh, focus there. You, do you see what I'm saying? Like, there is no ideological positioning there that makes any sense. And, and it's, it's wild that... It's wild. Like, it's so wild that the constituency that they're fucking knocking out is literally all Democrats. Like, these people in the 80 to 100,000 margin 
are literally all like Joe Biden Democrats, okay? These are the guys who, who, who voted for Joe Biden over Donald Trump. Like they are middle class, upper middle class. They, uh, in a lot of instances, live in like either suburbs that voted and literally turned the outcome of places like Georgia for Joe Biden, or they live in urban environments and they're definitely fucking Democrats as a consequence of living in urban environments. And you're basically just saying everyone else gets a, a, a dollar and you don't get shit for no reason whatsoever. For no reason. Like, nobody asked for this. Nobody fucking asked for this, okay? So, it is mind-boggling to me that we are doing this compromise for the sake of compromise, I guess. But sometimes we just want to compromise for no reason, right? So, when it comes to, like, Joe Manchin... I know where his allegiances are. His allegiances are with uh, his uh, ex-CEO daughter. Uh, I know that he got in trouble, right? But like, what is Joe Manchin's reasoning for why he would not want to expand voting rights? You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? Like, if you're a, a conservative Democrat, like, why the fuck are you also uh, doing the thing where you're like, well, no, black people shouldn't be able to vote, actually. Like, then you're not a Democrat. If you are going to uh, present yourself as opposition to this bill and genuinely present yourself as opposition to this bill, then you are literally a Democrat. Just if, if switch party loyalty. And people are saying like, oh, we're going to lose our majority. Well, at least you fucking now know, all right? Because we've already lost our majority because newsflash, Joe Manchin is not a part of the majority. And he literally never shows up. If he never shows up, then it doesn't matter that we are, uh, then that we have like a symbolic 50 50 split because we don't. Like, there are Democrats on my timeline who consistently say, well, Joe Manchin, like, who else is going to get elected in that district? Like, it's either a Republican or Joe Manchin. First of all, okay, if it's a Republican or Joe Manchin, but Joe Manchin is acting out like a Republican, then what are you winning from this? Like, you're not winning anything. Stop fucking, uh, stop attacking me because I want to pressure a Democrat to be a Democrat. If Joe Manchin was offering you some sort of victory by being a Democrat and voting alongside Democrats on big bills... Because that's what the point is. That's why you want a Democrat to win a fucking seat. So that they show up when it matters, right? Not just for them to have a D on the side of their fucking name, idiots. Like, a majority, for the sake of just having a majority, doesn't mean anything if they're not fucking voting alongside the majority. But that's it. If not, Mitch controls the Senate. Okay, so what changes? Okay, Mitch McConnell controls the Senate. Here, I hate to do this to you, but when Mitch McConnell controlled the Senate and Republicans were in, uh, Republicans were in charge, they gave more money to the people. So remember that, okay? They gave more money than Joe Biden, and they're probably going to end up having historically given more money to the people than Joe Biden did. So just remember that. So it's ridiculous. Like, it's ridiculous to, to, uh, to have this conversation over and over again. You just need him to keep the illusion of having more control in the Senate than they actually do, to be honest, though, considering they don't do anything anyways, that doesn't really matter. Yeah, if it's not Joe Manchin, they're gonna, they are gonna say it's the Senate parliamentarian or whatever, you know what I mean? They're... One thing he does give you is court picks, which does matter a lot, but overall, he's ass. I mean, that's ridiculous, though. That's absolutely ridiculous. Just try to deliberately replace him, then. Put, a, put another person out there against Joe Manchin. Primary him out. Threaten to primary him. Put some fucking pressure on him. This is what you're supposed to do. Also, Joe Manchin literally voted for Kavanaugh. So whoever fucking said that Joe Manchin is like, uh, you know, on the side of Democrats, like you're, you're a silly bitch. Again, he is very, he is basically, Joe Manchin is basically the same as a, a Mitt Romney or the same as a, uh, as a, like a, like a moderate Democrat. Do you understand?
They don't have popular takes because they're just nameless puppets. Not that you'd know anything about that. What? The, the irony is that, like, when we're having this conversation about Joe Manchin, it started off with what his ideological positioning is, and not a single one of you were able to deliver a cohesive take on it. And instead, we're talking about his, his like, uh, situation as the D and how we need to, like, you know, defend him as a Democrat in fucking West Virginia. I'm trying to figure out why he operates the way he does. And you can't give me the answer to that. So that's why you rely on the, the fear mongering that like what will happen in a no Joe Manchin uh, world, right? And it's, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Like if, if you're defending Joe Manchin as a Democrat or defending like not putting pressure on Joe Manchin as a Democrat, you are literally the stupidest part. You are dumber than Republicans who are anti-maskers, okay? Because you're supposed to know better. You're supposed to know better and you're still so fucking dumb. And therefore, at least you, you don't have the shield of ignorance and the social conditioning that like Republican hogs have. You're supposed to know better and you're still acting out in this way. You are also straight up advocating against your best interests here when you do that. So I do not have any sympathy for you. Think he's being an asshole maybe to appeal to the Chuds in his state? Oh, that's really interesting that he wants to appeal to the Chuds in his state. So uh, he's taking a, a stance against the uh, COVID bill, uh, the, the COVID relief bill, which his own conservative governor is uh, on board with. The uh, overwhelming majority of Americans are on board with. Uh, the majority of West Virginians are on board with. That's kind of crazy that he is, uh, you know, appealing to the Chuds in his state by literally doing the unpopular thing. Oh, my God. What a crazy situation we're in now for West Virginia and Joe Manchin's fucking future. Who is he appealing to? There is no constituency right now that's like, no, brother, we don't need it. We don't actually need the fucking, uh, you know, $15 minimum wage. We don't actually want money from the government. Like, you, you, you think the fucking, uh, the poor ass motherfuckers in, in uh, West Virginia are like, oh, I would hate to get a pay raise. I would hate to get four thousand more dollars on average uh, for doing the same work. That's what people in West Virginia are saying. <laughs> anyway, six percent of West Virginia supported. It literally does nothing but make the Dems look awful. I swear the Dems are nothing but control the opposition. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just awful. I hate it, but I'm sorry. I I'm right in this. And I was right in this when I said Joe Manchin is going to have a fucking field day going forward. Everyone's going to keep talking about him. I even tweeted about it as soon as uh, the, the Georgia, like literally we had a second uh, to, to celebrate the victory of, of the Georgia Senate races. And what did I tell you? I was like, Joe Manchin is going to be the number one name you hear all the fucking time. Maybe Kirsten Cinema as well. This kind of mentality, the way I operate, unfortunately is uh, the reason why I can't enjoy small victories like, uh, I don't know, being able to start cooking meth and no pixel uh, Grand Theft Auto with the clean boys, right? So um, as, soon as, uh, as soon as we uh, get an opportunity uh, to move uh, upwards in the, in the grand scheme of things and in, in like doing crime and shit, I'm immediately thinking two steps ahead. Like, all right, we are going to need to, uh, we're going to need to start, you know, creating distribution and delivery mechanisms. We're going to probably have to hire more people as well to, uh, cover the rest of the employees when we train the rest of the employees for delivering meth or cooking meth, whatever, whichever one we do. You know, that's the reason why I can't fucking uh, enjoy anything ever. And of course, I am referencing a video game and not like actually cooking meth. Don't be ridiculous. Curtail or end the filibuster to allow the Senate to pass legislation establishing a nationwide floor of voting rights, even in the teeth of this effort by Republicans across the country, which has probably done the most widespread and sustained. The funniest thing is like, okay, what if Joe Manchin doesn't vote for uh, all the court appointments and only votes yay on a, on a Democrat Supreme Court justice? Is it okay then? Is it still okay that we have a Democrat there instead of literally anyone else? Like you're, you're like, how far down are you willing to go? How far are you willing to go to grovel and beg and fucking sit on your hands and knees and cry? 
to shit and piss in your fucking pants. What, what, at what point will you say, yeah, it's kind of fucked up, like, uh, that uh, we, we need to do something about this. Like, we need to put pressure on him as a party. This is the reason why the ACA is the state that it is, that we never got the public option. Joe Lieberman was playing the role of Joe Manchin uh, under the uh, Obama administration as well. There were plenty of fucking problems that I have c pointed out a million times over that I was worried the Democrats were going to engage in. And one big one is uh, not whipping your own fucking caucus. Yeah. Okay, that was January 5th. It, literally the moment, the moment that it fucking happened. Damn, horny Yoda was not fucking horny on that one. What the fuck? Pacific Tsunami Warning Center says widespread hazardous tsunami waves possible after 8.0 quake near the Kermadec Islands. Oh no. Jesus Christ, dude. Third magnitude 7 plus earthquake. <laughs> Why are you putting the flushed face after that? Shitty watercolor watches XQC. I mean, I watched this happen. Will this teach me anything about politics? I'm only classified age. I need to learn. Hawaii, Hawaii is under tsunami watch. Uh oh. Okay, let's go back to fucking Dr. West. I got so triggered by Joe Manchin again that like it's just i got fucking caught in a whirlwind your here article is amazing and you are always amazing uh, as well professor so i'm going to start with you ron your article well it really raises the alarm you say that what happens over voting rights could be a turning point in the u.s in u.s democracy um house democrats just passed this hr1 as i mentioned but there's there's a, a looming fight are they willing to pull out all the stops to expand voting rights instead of having it restricted in state houses across the country? So far, the answer is most Democrats are, but maybe not enough. We just don't know if Joe Manchin or Kirsten Sinema will be willing to curtail or end the filibuster to allow the Senate to pass legislation establishing a nationwide floor of voting rights, even in the teeth of this effort by Republicans across the country, which has probably done the most widespread and sustained effort to roll back the right to the vote uh, since the Jim Crow era in the South, since before the Voting Rights Act. And you know, what's really striking is that uh, this is proceeding, many of the states in which this is proceeding most aggressively, whether it's Georgia or Arizona or Texas or Florida, are states where a majority of everybody who's aged into the electorate since 2016, a majority of the kids who've turned 18 since 2016 are kids of color. Uh, and so I think what you're seeing is Republicans. Dude, when Republicans hear that stat, they're like, oh, God. Oh, fuck. That's precisely why they're always going to be against uh, any sort of like uh, any sort of uh, uh, legislation that uh, makes it easier for black kids to vote. Trying to stack sandbags against that rising demographic tide oh. in these states. And the. Shitting on Democrats, shaking my head, just admit that you're a Democrats. Republican and move on. I am a Republican, dude. Yeah, going forward, I'm just a Republican. I'd probably get more play from liberals if I literally called myself a Republican, criticized Democrats all the fucking time, and then every now and then said, like, you know, uh, this person is homophobic or racist. Like, Democrats would probably listen to me more if I literally portrayed myself in a Tim Pool capacity like I was a fucking legitimate Republican. If I said the exact same things I say all the fucking time as a Republican, liberals would be like, oh my God, like he's actually, he's actually kind of woke. Like he's one of these woke Republicans. Like it's pretty cool. Like honestly, seriously, uh, because they are endlessly fascinated with the fucking moronic shit that Republicans say. And uh, they're willing to listen and hear out Republicans because they think like, uh, 
they're more conservative than them and liberals are very fucking conservative. Will take what may be their last chance between now and 2022 to establish a nationwide floor of voting rights uh, that stops uh, this towering wave of voter suppression. So Professor West, I, I, listen, I, we've discussed this, these issues before, but not, you know, this is, mm. this is happening now, right? And this is frightening. These bills are just beyond outrageous. The one that passed in Georgia, in the Georgia House this week, limits early voting on weekends, requires more identification for absentee voting, restricts drop boxes. This is going to disproportionately affect black Americans. Are we entering a new Jim Crow era? Well, you know, I want to thank Brother Ron for his contributions on this, and happy birthday to you, though, brother. I know you turned 50-something-something something on Monday, and you share a birthday with the great Harry Belafonte, who was born in Jim Crow. He, his elegance, his nobility ought to teach us something, namely that the backlash is real. There's no doubt about that. You talk about the big lie in terms of the election. The bigger lie is white supremacy, my brother, the various ways in which white supremacy develops, reshapes, refashions itself to not just engage in voter suppression of black voters, but not to, to not allow us to have a vision so we could have a multiracial solidarity to change this nation in the name of poor and working people disproportionately black, brown, and indigenous, but it cuts across the board, my brother. Mm. Republicans admitted, Professor, just this week in a SCOTUS hearing that making it harder to vote is what they need, that they have to do that in order to win. Bro, are you just uh, uh, like, what are they doing? What, what are you guys doing right now? What's happening here? You don't know how to fucking operate a computer? Like, fuck. What's going on, dude? Come on, guys, figure it out. Freaking boomers. And, you know, they said, because this puts us at a disadvantage, and that's why we want to change these things. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but that was uh, almost a direct quote. What does it say that they are willing to embrace racist policies in order to achieve that? Oh, well, brother, you, you and I know that, you know, we're not surprised by evil or paralyzed by despair, that they supported a neo-fascist gangster, so that they'd have no deep commitment to democracy. This is crude power. This makes Mac Machiavelli. Oh, I think it, it might actually be the guy who is clipping that has like a fucked up uh, window. Really frown in the grave because he, he wasn't this crude. He wasn't this vulgar. So at this point, they would allow for the democracy itself to collapse in the name of power, in the name of greed. Mm -hmm. But we shouldn't be surprised. We got to arm ourselves. Brother Ron. Jesus Christ. Insights, variety of other insights. How do we ensure both the preservation of, the, of what's left of the democracy and then the expansion of it? Hmm. Ron, you, you point know, out that Democrat. Go ahead. What did you want to say? I was, was going to say that that's why this moment is so critical. I mean, if you look at the Supreme Court, the 6 3 Republican Supreme Court, they are not going to put a break or, or erect an obstacle to what Republicans are doing in the states. If you look at the states that are moving to suppress the vote, they are by and large mostly places where Republicans hold the upper hand now with a coalition based on older white voters. And as I said, they are trying to create these barriers, these sandbags against the rising tide of demographic change in, the, in those states. It's going to be very hard to win uh, in those states. So if the one lever that Democrats have to try to protect the basic rules of democracy is that they control both chambers of Congress and the White House today, if they if they let this opportunity go and they don't find a way to get around the Republican filibuster in the Senate, um, in 2022, the very acts in these states, the, the suppression and the gerrymandering that's coming could cost them one or both chambers of Congress. They will lose the opportunity to set national voting rules. And at that point, there will be nothing in the way. The road will be clear for kind of an endless succession of suppression and gerrymanders that inhibits the rise of the diverse young younger generations in particular. And I point out in another story this week, all of this is occurring, Don, as the baby boom is for the since 1980, the baby boom has been the largest generation in the electorate, predominantly white baby boom. In Not 2024, anymore. for the first time, Z and millennials right. will be larger. And this is when it's happening. Yeah. Professor West, what I love about you is that you don't give a damn what people think about you, right? And you have been critical of a lot of Democrats in the past. You say that they haven't been willing to go to the mat on important issues. Will they step up on voter suppression because the stakes are real? Nope. I don't think so. Okay. So there are certain things, right? We, we, I, I've moved beyond morality. 
because uh, beyond the morality of like uh, making sure that there is true equality for all Americans to participate in the democratic process, uh, uh, beyond the morality of such uh, a, a uh, legislative agenda item, like following through on that legislative agenda, um, I think Democrats don't even care about fucking maintaining their position of power. I, I do. I, I think they just don't care. If they cared about, like, actually winning elections, they would hyper-focus on making sure that as many college-educated youths are out there as possible. They would look for initiatives to make college free. Okay? Because that is an automatic... That is an automatic fucking uh, 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 talent pool for the Democratic Party. Okay? That's one. If they truly cared about winning... And if they truly cared about winning the uh, midterm elections, for example, they would be going balls to the wall, super fucking aggressive on anyone within their ranks that is, is, is posing opposition to this bill at hand. We would not be talking. We would not be talking at all about Joe Manchin right now. We would already, we would already be spear dicking this uh, immediate COVID relief plus the $15 minimum wage, which is like, really important part of their uh, campaign promises uh, through the budget reconciliation. There are many ways in which they could have furthered the conversation and uh, left it on uh, Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema's doorstep, basically, and, uh, and whipped them and con continued to put pressure on them, and they didn't do it. It makes no sense to me that they do not uh, do this. It, it straight up makes no sense. Um... Unless you assume that they want to lose. So that they can consistently say, well, Republicans are really bad. Look, they're, they're preventing us from, you know, we lost the election. We lost the midterms. Now Republicans own the majority in Senate. We have the president, but, you know, we can't really do anything. Look at us. Look at our symbolic posturing. Look at our symbolic posturing and how much we want to do things that are anti-racist in nature. But when we do have the power, we just couldn't get cowardly Joe Manchin to get, go along with like wanting black, uh, uh, allowing black people to, to vote uh, or in ease of vote. Imagine campaigning to tell voters you can't do anything. I mean, that's what they do. It is what they do. There is nothing better. There was no better gift to the Democratic Party than someone like Donald Trump. No better gift to the Democratic Party than someone like Donald Trump and also someone like Mitch McConnell maintaining the majority power in the Senate. Because then they could turn around and be like, look, we have the House. We're putting up all these symbolic bills. But, oh, God, we just can't get them pushed through. We just can't. We just can't push these bills through. Come on. We just have nothing. We have no power. Oops. But, like, hey, if you vote for us, when we do have power, we'll get shit done. We'll do good things. Okay, well, right now you do have power. And you are talking about how marginal that power is. And how it's not enough. Really, really, really high. I agree with you. We're going to have to put strong pressure on them because they won't do it by themselves. Too much cowardliness and spinelessness, but the right kind of pressure based on both principle as well as tremendous effort, collective effort. You see what's going on right now in, in, in Texas with the workers coming together. In order to deal with those are the kinds of collective actions that we need in order to deal with this crucial moment that uh, Brother Ron is, is, is highlighting here today. Yeah. Ron, the former v uh, Vice President Pence is now continuing the big lie, saying that there was election fraud in 2020. He's accusing Democrats who wanted to expand voting of an unconstitutional power grab. This is the same Pence who was hunting. You literally voted Biden? Yeah, who cares? Like, I don't understand. Should that stop me from being critical of, of Joseph Robinette? I, I'm confused. Like, also, what was the alternative? Uh, let's say, uh, what did you do? You voted for Trump then? Uh, did you do a great job with that? You voted for the Green Party? Is that what happened? Like, I, I, I never understand this. Uh, I never understand this take. Like, okay, you, you voted for PSL? I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm glad that you are... Uh, I'm glad that you you have uh, all of the uh, the the moral high ground here. I guess. Um, I don't understand. Not only did I not only did I uh, vote, but uh, I was very critical of Joe Biden. I did not want Joe Biden to be my candidate. I did not. I still 
don't want Joe Biden to be the candidate. He's fucking dog shit. I never stopped criticizing him, which is precisely why a lot of liberals constantly shit on me and say that, uh, you know, I'm a fucking Republican or something. I don't know how I donated $1 to Kirsten Gillibrand. I still don't know what happened on that day. You've got a delusional belief that corporate are ever going to concede a crumb to working people? No, it's not a delusional belief. It's like saying I have a delusional belief that Bernie Sanders is going to win. You're mistaking what I want to happen with uh, what I believe is going to happen. I, if there's one thing you can't attribute to me, it's optimism, okay? I am a perpetually pessimistic person. As a matter of fact, a lot of people criticize me for my very moderate and very centered in reality fucking takes about the future of America and about the future of the Democratic Party. In a lot of circumstances, leftists will get frustrated with what I have to say and claim that I'm a doomer. I will also qualify when I want something to happen and I will give you reasons as to why it should happen, not only from a leftist point of view, not only from like my uh, own moral framework, but also on top of that, I will give you arguments. I will give you arguments as to why Democrats should do this from the point of view of Democrats exclusively caring about winning seats and maintaining their position of power. And I do this because I want to exhaust every argument possible as to why Democrats are not doing this so that we can deduct from everything that we have mentioned that there must be an alternative reason for why Democrats are operating this way. And that alternative reason I speculate is their, their interest in uh, losing their grip on power so they can continue fucking fundraising from all of you hogs and me as well and milking us like the cattle that we are by uh, showing how cruel the Republican Party is. And they are cruel. They are cruel as fuck. The one thing that Democratic, the Democratic establishment does and does very effectively is uh, provide a stopgap measure for any sort of progressive momentum happening in this country. They are very good at killing progressive momentum in this country. But guess what? If there is a crumb of hope out of this uh, sea of disparity, that crumb comes from the fact that there are more and more leftist candidates winning positions of power, winning seats within the Democratic Party. Okay? Hassan, this is utterly ridiculous. They would make more money if they were the dominant party. You are utterly wrong. You are literally wrong. They would not. Because being the dominant party and actually following through on the, the legislative uh, agenda items that they've put forward as the values that they espouse are supposedly progressive, they would literally lose their main benefactors, corporations, if they truly cared about income inequality in the way that they claim they care about it, they would have to at least scale back. I mean, they would have to scale back Wall Street growth dramatically. They would have to enforce regulations on numerous industries that they take advantage of currently as corporate beneficiaries. Okay. And they would lose out on a gigantic chunk of their main corporate benefactors. Yeah, their big donors would fucking own them. Absolutely own them. Do you understand? And also, Democrats raise more money by uh, during Trump's admin than any at, at any time before. Yeah, exactly. Orange man bad and having like a perfect villain allows Democrats to fundraise like a motherfucker too. Acting as if they are not just controlled opposition by the people who also donate to the Republicans. Exactly. It is a charade in many ways. 
And every now and then, uh, the powers, uh, those in positions of power allow you to have fucking crumbs and you have a unique opportunity to feel a sense of hope, right? With, uh, you know, the $15 minimum wage increase, which is like, which is long overdue, right? And, uh, you get a, a sense of hope and then it's robbed and, and taken from you. Did by rioters because of these bogus fraud claims. And by the way, the people who are want these restrictions, they're doing these restrictions all on the, uh, the pretense that there was some sort of voter fraud. It's a big lie as well. And maybe, as I said in the opening of the show at 10 o'clock, maybe that's just the whole point of it, is that they can use this whole big lie to, in order to win elections right. because they, you know, in a, in, a, you know, in a fraudulent way, because they can't win it legitimately. So much of a war, right? I mean, what mm -hmm. you're seeing up and down the Republican Party in the states and every Republican, for example, voting as H.R. 1, uh, what you're seeing, I think, up and down the party is that the fear of demographic eclipse has eroded the commitment to the basic rules of small d uh, democracy. Uh, and what, what is, I think, especially uh, important for Democrats to understand is that if they don't establish a nationwide floor of voting rights and voting protections in the next few years, and Republicans win control of Congress and then perhaps win control of the White House uh, with the help of the suppression that they're, they're undertaking in the states, Donald Trump signaled last Sunday at CPAC, uh, and Rick Scott has already introduced legislation that would try to impose these red state restrictions nationally, to impose them on the blue oh, states. Boy. It's kind of a version of Lincoln saying, you know, we can't survive half free, half slave, uh, and half free uh, if there is not a nationwide, uh, basically, framework of voting rights. There may well be a nationwide framework of voting restrictions uh, sometime in this decade. Again, precisely as the U.S. is undergoing this profound demographic transition. Transition. None of that is a coincidence. Ron, keep informing people. Uh, professor, uh, keep up the fight. Thank you very much. I'll see. Small d democracy is like democracy, the democratic process, allowing the majority to to rule. Uh, big D democracy, Democrats is uh, is is the Democratic Party. It's supposed to mean small government involved. Big D got you ever. Isn't it funny that Republicans hate big government, yet they want to federally limit access to voting? Have you ever spoken to Professor West? I have not. Middle D is my rape name? What? Fuck, that's insta ban right there. Probably meant rap. I yeah, well talk to the fucking mod uh talk to the moderators. Republicans only hate big government when it inconveniences them. No, they don't even hate big government. They never hate big government. Okay. They love big government. They love federal uh, restrictions. It's just that, um, it's a way for them to use, dude, this guy has been asking about Claudia Conway. Like, dude, I don't care, dude. I'm sorry. Stop. I, I don't want to do anything with that family. I don't understand what the fuck's going on there. And, and you probably shouldn't, uh, care so much about it either because like, it's very creepy. The fascination that like fully grown ass adult liberals have with Claudia Conway has always weirded me the fuck out. Uh, I've, I'd never cover it. I think it's really fucking weird. I'm sorry if you uh, enjoy that sort of shit. I'm not, 